Hello and welcome to this new section on project life cycle. This is an important section. In this one, currently we'll have only single video. This will explain you how the entire life cycle happens from start to end. This will be definitely beneficial for all of them, but especially for those who have never worked on a project. So let us understand what phases are involved and what process is involved in each phase. Let's get started. So this is the typical flow of a project. We are talking about high level and we will not use any technical terms over here. Just simple terms. So the first phase is initiation during which you start or kickstart or kick off your project. The second phase is planning after the project has been initiated. The third one is execution in which you actually build solutions or develop. The fourth step is monitoring where you monitor whatever developments or solutions you have built. And the final is closure where you sign up the project. So this is a high level project flow and we will follow the same sequence. Let us understand each one of them one by one. The first one is initiation. Initiation is where let's say there is a client or a customer who wants to build some solution based on his requirement. So he creates a new requirement. Then there is a project which is being created, which defines that what client wants. So he knows exactly, okay, uh, this is what I want to achieve, but he doesn't know how to achieve and he doesn't have those expertise. So he needs a group of people or some third party vendors called as service providers who can provide that kind of service. So in this case, the service providers come into picture. Multiple service providers may contact client. Either the cl client can directly contact the service providers if they are already dealing with them or maybe some new service providers have approached the client stating that they are offering these solutions. It can happen two ways. So multiple vendors approaches client, approach client, each vendor then understands the requirement. This is a very critical phase over here. Okay. As we work in day to day life, we may not be able to participate in these kind of interviews or maybe meetings rather, I would say, wherein the service provider pitch their solutions to the client. And um, I'm fortunate that I have been part of many such meetings wherein I had the lead position to pitch the solutions. So that's why I can tell you by sure. But most of us may not get that kind of exposure. But if you do get somewhere, if you move higher in the hierarchy, definitely one day I pray that opportunity comes to you very soon rather than later. So coming back, in this, the service providers will pitch their solutions, right? Uh, whatever service offering. And here as well, they will showcase what kind of history they have, what, how many, since how many years they have been providing services, what are the different services, how has been their um, ramp up in terms of projects and uh, in terms of the count of the employees, what kind of different projects they have delivered, their success stories with customers and so onwards. Then the client, after talking to each one of them separately, he will start eliminating some service providers, which he think that they were not up to the mark. And there can be any number of reasons over here. Maybe their sales offering in terms of monetary was out of budget or maybe over budget, obviously, or they didn't like what kind of capabilities they had. And that was not up to the expectations are at par with the client requirement, right? So client will eliminate vendors one by one. And then let's say now he has narrowed down on last couple of vendors or two vendors or service providers. Here, the client may hold one more round of meeting or additional meeting as required as for clarification. It is not given that, okay, in only one meeting that you will back the project or win the bid. There could be subsequent n number of meetings for some clarification. So we'll keep it simple. So the client holds additional meeting and then he finalizes, okay, which vendor to go off with. So the client finally will award the project to the final vendor. Now here as well, there are many steps involved which I have not listed, but I'll just explain them verbally. Is This is the actual phase or the time when both the parties, the client and the service provider or the vendor, they sign off an MOU, which is Memorandum of Understanding or just simply we can call this contract. This contract has 
all the terms and conditions listed, for example, what the client is expecting, what the service provider is going to deliver, how much time it is going to take, how the delivery should happen in phase manner. Moreover, what and which mode uh, of uh, through which the payment would be made from client to the service provider, in what phases it would be made, and all those terms and conditions. You could put in anything and everything over there. All right. And that is a standard procedure which happens. So the next thing after the initiation is done is planning. So one of the most uh, earliest uh, step is to think about resources. Since now, you know, the people who are involved morely in pitching the solutions and finalizing the contract, those are sitting at the higher level. But the actual work is done by the middle layer or the lower layer in your hierarchy of the organization. So whoever is responsible to take over that project will think about hiring the resources, right? To have the proper kind of staffing. So this is where the team formation or building the team comes into picture. And this is a typical setup for uh, any BI project or ETL project. So I'm considering that you have the immediate hierarchy as manager who will lead the entire project, who's responsible for the project. Under him, reporting to him would be multiple people starting from the left is the most important. Obviously, each one is equally important, but in terms of experience and knowledge, architect will be the one, or solution architect will be the one who will actually create the architecture and on a high level approach, he will say, okay, what is to be done? What is not to be done? How it is to be done? And when the process of development starts, then team will interact with him, which I'll explain later on. Then the functional people are another important set of uh, people or team members. Now the task of these people is they act as a mediator between your between the team and the client. So whenever you want to talk to client, you may or may not be able to directly interact with them. So the functional team is the one who will talk to the client. They will seek clarifications. They will understand the requirement. If the team has any questions, the functional team will take them forward and discuss it with client, get this answer, seek the answers and just pass on that information to the team. And this process goes back and forth, all right? Then another important uh, set of group of people are data engineers who will work on mostly creation of the pipelines and based on whatever tools have been agreed on with the client. Next is the data analyst people. These are the people who will actually work on the reporting stuff. They might be working on different tools like Excel, Power BI, Tableau, or any other similar BI tools. And then finally, the testers who will validate our development and give that stamp of sign off that yes, your development is complete. This is how that process happens. And this is why we need these number of minimum number of people, right? So in addition to that, the client may also ask you to develop a POC, which is nothing but proof of concept. It is not an entire full-fledged development. They just want to see how your team is capable of doing this thing or not. And then based on that, they will move further. Then the important step over here is task assignment through sprint planning. Now let us briefly uh, understand what is sprint planning. Sprint is nothing but a term used wherein we pre-decide what we want to do in the upcoming phase of let's say two weeks, three weeks or four weeks. So that period of two, three, four weeks is decided from project to project by the implementers or the one who are governing this entire project, mostly at the higher level. And that is nothing but called a sprint. Okay. And we number the sprint like we have typical numbers like sprint one, sprint two, sprint three, or we can have some other number that is pre-decided. But sprint is nothing but the period where you pre-decide what tasks you're going to do in the next sprint. All right. And to do that, it is not done verbally. Earlier, maybe decades ago when we started, we were using mostly emails, right? And then we moved on to Excel where we used to track our tasks. But in modern day, we have a lot of tools which enable this task management and uh, a, a, enhance our productivity. They help you to track, plan, and organize things in a very much easier and seamless way. So I can give you a couple of examples of such tools. Mainly you would have heard about Jira platform, which is a web-based software uh, as a service, wherein you can manage your project entirely. Similar things are uh, there in Azure, also called as Azure Boards. Although we don't want to discuss anything further into it, 
maybe sometimes separately we'll have some separate videos on so that is important because this is where how you know the tracking happens that is also a part of planning the next phase is execution this is where your the development phase starts so firstly if there is a poc required you deliver the poc and then the actual development starts the actual development is an iterative process what that means is it goes on in circle it's not that okay you will build the entire solution in one go that will never happen in any typical project you do everything in step by step stage by stage so obviously first you start with design and developing a single task then you self test that then you sit with the architect for a review the the architect may disapprove your solution that so you have to make those fine changes and come back for the review once the architect appro uh, approves the solution you submit that to the tester so that the testing team can eliminate any bugs or any edge cases or one of scenarios which you would have thought or what is the expectation of the client they have a proper process in place they will do all the checking and run the solution if everything is fine then okay if not they will raise uh, errors alerts or bugs wherein you have to fix those things and come back to the same cycle until final testing once the testing team gives an approval yes you're good to go ahead then you will deploy the code to the higher environment which is the live or the production environment and this case starts again the cycle will start again when you pick up the next development hence it is an iterative process which will go on okay then after this monitoring okay so monitoring can happen side by side with execution also the first step is to monitor for any solutions that you have deployed from one environment to another mostly we work in development in it industry and then we deploy to production or live environment so you have to monitor it's not that you will start monitoring at the end of your life cycle of project no you have to do this continuously as you incrementally deploy your solutions from development to production or live environment so you monitor if there are any errors you see alerts will be raised okay or alarm will be raised bugs would be raised by the responsible team or you yourself will flag them off then you will rebuild the solution and test and follow the same cycle what you have followed in the execution phase after that you will review and final test and then you will again deploy so this process will go on continuously okay this is monitoring phase then we move towards the closure the final review between the client and the vendor will happen the client will review everything and client will acknowledge that if the development and the deployment is complete as to what has been agreed in the contract signed and mutually agreed then the handover happens the vendor or the service provider will hand over the complete solution to client and share any knowledge transfer that is required in order to run your solutions whatever technical stuff or knowledge any minimum piece of information which is required and this will happen in the next phase where they will have to submit a complete thorough documentation which enlists the architecture the tools used uh, the services you have used uh, things to be taken care of do's and don'ts all kind of faqs basically okay what happens when there are failure how to monitor those and exactly all those things and then the final project sign off happens wherein the client may pay off whatever x amount of payment or the face payment is left over and then they uh, end the project so this is a high level project uh, life cycle and we have not discussed anything technical because we'll do that definitely in the projects when we start but i hope this gives you a somewhat background of how the flow happens there could be one or more stages less or more in between we'll definitely discuss about them but this at least should give you a good heads up hope you enjoyed this and it was informative that's it in this video see you in the next one